a typical morning in the bustling center of Los Angeles. People rush about their business, oblivious to the world around them. Ivy is driving with her teenage children Izzy and Josh. Suddenly, something happens that makes everyone freeze in horror. A huge crack appears in the middle of the road, turning into a chasm. People, cars, and buildings begin to rapidly fall into it, causing panic and chaos. In panic, Ivy and her children jump out of the car, trying to escape from the earthquake's epicenter. A crazed crowd knocks Josh off his feet, and he gets separated from his loved ones. Seeing her son missing, Ivy rushes to help him, but she herself falls into the widening abyss. In desperation, Izzy tries to grab her mother's hand, but she slips away and falls into the deep abyss. After a painfully long fall, Ivy lands in a deserted open area. Struggling to her feet, she doesn't notice the wedding ring slipping off her finger. In the sky, a huge crack twinkles through which she fell. Unable to find Josh anywhere, she sets out to search for him. Meanwhile, in Los Angeles, Gavin, Ivy's husband and the father of their children, is still unaware of what has happened. After three years of absence, he is trying to find his place again in the U.S. Air Force. A former military pilot, he survived an airplane crash in the Mojave Desert, which was a real miracle. Since then, he has been haunted by mysterious visions of a strange place, which have had a serious impact on his psyche. Gavin started drinking, causing difficulties in family life. Nevertheless, he decided to gather his strength for the sake of his family's well-being. Gavin's conversation with the military leadership is interrupted by an emergency news broadcast about an earthquake in the middle of Los Angeles. Izzy, who managed to avoid falling into the abyss, calls him, frightened. The concerned father immediately rushes to the scene of the disaster to his daughter, where emergency services are already providing assistance to the victims. Suddenly, unusual birds fly out of the abyss, leaving everyone present bewildered. Ivy finds Josh, and together they join a group of people who have found themselves in this lost world. The survivors set up camp, spending the night in the vehicles that also ended up in this unusual place. The transition to the new reality proves unsuccessful for some of the people. In the wild forest, Dr. Sam is attacked by a saber-toothed tiger, after which he falls off a cliff. Thanks to the support of his daughter Riley, he manages to survive and make it to the camp despite sustaining serious injuries. At dawn, the crowd gathers at the food distribution point. Supplies are running low, and tension among the survivors is growing. People begin to argue, striving to get the best food. Suddenly, the appearance of a giant sloth emerging from the forest interrupts the general quarrel. In panic, people seek shelter and freeze in anticipation of what will happen next. The sloth quickly resolves the food dilemma. Having consumed all the supplies, it retreats back into the forest. An anthropologist named Scott enthusiastically informs the crowd that they have encountered a representative of ancient North American fauna. However, the most incredible thing is that this species became extinct over 10,000 years ago. Scott concludes that they have all fallen into a temporal vortex and ended up in ancient land. Meanwhile, in Los Angeles, authorities begin developing a search and rescue operation for the missing people. Gavin shares information that the terrain he has seen in his visions for many years actually exists. He claims that the crater formed in the center of Los Angeles leads precisely there. Despite his willingness to act as a volunteer, the military command is hesitant to entrust him with the mission due to his issues with alcohol. To carry out the critically important mission, military pilot LeVay is urgently summoned from Germany. LeVay is a close friend of Gavin's family. The night before meeting Gavin, LeVay recalls their last argument. At that time, he advised Gavin to abandon his visions, warning that otherwise he risked losing his family. This conversation led to the rupture of their friendship, and they hadn't been in touch for several years. Now, with Gavin's premonitions confirmed, LeVay feels guilty for not believing his friend in a difficult moment. In the ancient world, Ivy and the surviving man, Tay, set out on a hunt to replenish the lost food supplies. During their joint expedition, they engage in a candid conversation. Ivy recounts a tragic incident that occurred several years ago when her daughter was involved in an accident. On that day, Ivy was delayed at work and asked a neighbor to take her daughter home, which led to the accident. As a result, Izzy lost her leg and went through a long and difficult rehabilitation process. After her story, Ivy asks Tay to share something about himself, but he evades the question. Officer Maribeth strives to improve her relationship with her troubled son, Lucas. Before their unexpected fall into the crater, she unsuccessfully tried to find him in Los Angeles. Despite both of them ending up trapped, Lucas continues to refuse to communicate with his mother. During their exploration of the forest, they stumble upon a pit filled with sharp stakes. Lucas concludes that there are other people in this world who hunt wild animals. He plans to track them to determine if they have indeed traveled into the past. Dr. Sam anxiously tells his daughter that he no longer feels his legs after falling off the cliff. He explains that excess fluid is putting pressure on his spinal cord, putting him at risk of losing the ability to move permanently. Riley, who has recently completed medical training, finds herself needing to perform an urgent operation to remove the fluid. Despite her fears and uncertainty, she realizes that this is the only way to save her father. Ivy and Tay are hunting rabbits when they are suddenly caught off guard by a giant bear. 
In an attempt to escape the enraged predator, they find refuge in the nearest cave. However, their relief quickly turns to despair when the entrance becomes blocked due to a collapse. Venturing deeper into the cave, they encounter Lucas and Meribeth, who have come here in search of ancient people. With no other choice, the group decides to carefully explore the cave in hopes of finding another way out. Riley turns to Josh and Scott for help in finding painkillers so she can perform surgery on her father. Together, they decide to search nearby vehicles in hopes of finding the necessary medication. Scott demonstrates an unconventional approach to the task, discovering several packages of heroin in one of the cars. Considering that the drug could alleviate pain, Dr. Sam, despite the risks, asks his daughter to use it in small doses for anesthesia during the operation. Following his visions, in the present time, Gavin discovers the place where his wife lost her ring. He provides the rescue team with a detailed description of Ivy's route through the ancient lands, which will help LeVay locate the missing after he flies into the temporal vortex. Under the influence of drugs, Sam becomes significantly relaxed, and his speech becomes disjointed. In this state, he begins to instruct Riley on how to perform the surgery. However, at the climax of his narrative, he falls asleep, leaving the teenagers to face the difficulties alone. Meanwhile, deep within the cave, the group encounters a dead end. The only thing they manage to find is a pool dotted with pitcher plants. Kay notes that pitcher plants require light to grow, indicating a path to the surface where sunlight is present. Deciding to explore this theory, he prepares to plunge into the water in search of an exit. Ivy tries to convince him of the danger of his plan, but Tay disregards her warnings and dives into the depths of the pool. Ivy, Maribeth, and Lucas hold their breath in tense anticipation. After some time, Tay resurfaces. He joyfully announces that the pool indeed leads to an exit on the opposite side of the cave. Changing his tone to serious, he warns the group that they are about to witness something shocking. Gavin and LeVay remain alone, engaging in a serious conversation. Gavin insists that his friend confess why he actually left for Germany. LeVay admits that it was unbearable for him to watch Ivy suffer because of her husband's mental health and alcoholism. He was in love with Gavin's wife, and it was the fear of these uncontrollable feelings that prompted him to leave. Do you still love her? Yeah, but I'm sorry. Left without her father's support, Riley panics. Josh comes to her aid, calming her down and reminding her of Dr. Sam's instructions. Gathering her strength and controlling her emotions, Riley successfully completes the surgery. Some time later, the patient regains consciousness and cautiously tries to move his feet. To his joy, his legs respond once again. In the cave, the company horrifically discovers the skeleton in a California college uniform. Nearby on the wall are tally marks indicating that the unfortunate person spent several years in this world. This grim discovery instills heaviness and despair as the prospect of escaping the temporal trap seems increasingly elusive. Emerging from the cave, the company discovers edible mushrooms on the trees and brings them back to camp. They decide to keep what they saw from the other survivors to avoid depriving them of hope. Before embarking on the dangerous mission, Gavin hands LeVay Ivy's wedding ring, lost by her at the moment of the fall. Despite his hurt over his best friend's betrayal, Gavin pleads with LeVay to do everything possible to bring his family back home. Hay decides to confess Ivy the whole truth about himself. He has been diagnosed with a brain tumor, and before falling into the abyss, he planned to end his life. However, now he intends to escape the trap and rebuild his relationship with his family. So he asks Ivy to keep the gun with her. In response, Ivy confesses that on the day of her daughter's accident, she didn't stay late at work as she told her family. She spent the evening with LeVay, and since then, she has been plagued by guilt. Kay convinces Ivy to forgive herself and give herself a chance at a new life. Piloting the plane, LeVay descends into the depths of the vortex. Suddenly, the aircraft's engine fails, and communication with the command center is lost. These unexpected problems lead him to make an emergency landing in uncharted territories of the ancient world. Using his parachute, LeVay lands safely, hanging from the branches of an ancient tree. Witnessing the plane crash, the camp inhabitants decide to take action. At dawn, a group of five volunteers, Ivy, Josh, Lucas, Scott, and Riley, gather, determined to head to the crash site. Before setting out, Lucas retrieves a pistol from his car. Scott is horrified to realize that it's the same pistol he recently stole heroin from. The problem is compounded by the fact that Scott, under the influence of marijuana, hid the drug packs in the woods and now can't remember their exact location. During their journey, the group discovers a parachute tangled in tree branches. In the next moment, LeVay emerges from the forest. Josh and Ivy run joyfully to meet him. LeVay explains that he was sent by the government through the portal for a rescue operation. Unfortunately, his plane crashed and went down in a remote part of the forest. He also informs them that nobody from the outside world knows about the survivors. To avoid public attention, only one rescue operation was planned. Most likely, after its failure, additional search and rescue missions will not be organized. However, LeVay intends to find his plane and fix it to bring everyone home. Meanwhile, in Los Angeles, an earthquake occurs with the epicenter near the vortex. 
Gavin heads to Dr. Nathan, who is researching the mysterious portal. Not finding her at her workplace, he notices a folder with personal documents on her desk. A representative of the U.S. Department of Defense enters the office and explains to Gavin that Dr. Nathan took the day off. The government, it turns out, is canceling the rescue operation due to fears of causing another earthquake and losses among the population. Disappointed, Gavin discreetly takes Dr. Nathan's personal documents with him before leaving the Air Force Base. After the crash, LeVay gets a scrape on his arm, which soon makes him feel unwell. In search of water to alleviate his condition, Josh and Scott head to the nearest stream. Alone with his companion, Scott confesses that the stolen heroin actually belongs to Lucas. Josh advises him to stay calm and not reveal himself to avoid conflict with the drug dealer. Suddenly, LeVay's navigation device picks up the location of the plane, and the group sets off immediately. In the camp, life goes on as usual, and people try to adapt to the new conditions of existence. One man sets out into the depths of the forest for a hunt but encounters something unimaginably terrifying. Meanwhile, away from the others, the religious girl Veronica keeps a close eye on her younger sister Lily. The girl craves interaction and friendship with other camp residents, but Veronica persistently keeps her from contacting them. Furthermore, she demands that Lily pretend to be mute to keep their secret. The girl refuses to obey her sister, for which she receives a slap. In tears, Lily runs off into the depths of the forest and stumbles upon a lifeless body of a man with signs of violent death. She notices the figure of the attacker ahead and screams in horror. Hearing her cry, Veronica and other camp residents rush to help. By that time, the perpetrator had already disappeared into the forest. Officer Maribet attempts to interrogate Lily about what she might have seen, but Veronica quickly steers her away from everyone. Traces on the victim's body indicate that he survived the lightning strike. Tay plans to use his psychologist skills to build trust with the frightened girl and uncover what really happened. Led by LeVay, the team arrives at the river, finding it shallow enough to cross. During the crossing, they fail to notice an ancient creature lurking in the murky waters. Suddenly, the monster attacks and drags Riley underwater. LeVay rushes to her rescue, shooting at the prehistoric predator, saving Riley. After the tense moment, the whole group successfully reaches the opposite shore. They finally discover the plane, but upon inspecting its systems, they find that the engine compressor is out of order. In the conditions of the distant past, where access to necessary spare parts is completely absent, repairing the plane seems impossible. Gavin, while reviewing Nathan's documents, stumbles upon a remarkable discovery. The appearance of a crater in Los Angeles is not a unique occurrence in world history. Among the papers, he finds a photograph showing Dr. Nathan with Rebecca Oldridge, another specialist in the study of temporal portals. After locating Rebecca's address, Gavin and Izzy decide to go to her, hoping she can help save their family. Suddenly, the plane's onboard system detects a signal emanating approximately 5 miles from their current location. This discovery instills a new hope in the group that there may be other people in this ancient world who can help them repair the plane. They decide to take a short rest and set out to search for the signal at dawn. During dinner, Riley expresses gratitude to Scott for the heroin he found, which turned out to be critical during the operation. Lucas instantly realizes where his stash went and shoots Scott a hateful glance. An honest conversation ensues between Eve and LeVay. She admits that being separated from him has been hard for her. She parted ways with her husband because she was overwhelmed by his obsessive state. LeVay tells her that the visions tormenting Gavin for years were actually flashes from this forgotten world. The only reason there is a rescue mission is because Gavin saw that you were alive down here. LeVay returns Eve the engagement ring, which his friend saw in his visions and dug up from the ground. At dawn, as they move toward the signal source, Eve is overcome with guilt. She wants to return home as soon as possible and ask her husband for forgiveness. During their conversation, LeVay struggles to admit that Gavin knows about their secret relationship. This news intensifies Eve's feelings of guilt. Suddenly, the group stops, discovering a settlement ahead. Scott is astonished to note that such constructions exceed the capabilities of people from that time. Considering that the signal is coming from there, the group decides to meet the unknown face to face. Gavin and Izzy arrive at Rebecca's ranch and find Dr. Nathan there. They persistently ask the scientists to disclose information about the existence of other temporal portals. Rebecca explains that the key to the puzzle lies in the La Brea tar pits. Although the government refuses to resume rescue operations, the scientists have devised an alternative plan to enter the pit. They show Gavin and Izzy the plane, an exact replica of the one LeVay flew off in. Rebecca recounts a rescue operation in the Mojave, where a similar crater appeared several years ago. Before the rescue team could descend inside, the portal unexpectedly closed. This incident forced Rebecca to go into hiding and take refuge from the authorities on her ranch. She assures Gavin that their plane is capable of successfully flying through the La Brea Tar Pits portal without causing an earthquake. However, for the plan to succeed, 
Gavin needs to take on the role of the pilot. Meanwhile, Tay has been trying to befriend Lily. Finally, despite Veronica's disapproval, the girl decides to speak up. She reveals that the attack was carried out by an old man with a mark on his hand on his back. But Veronica interrupts her and forcibly takes her away. Meanwhile, from behind the trees, that very old man with a red imprint on his clothes is watching them. When LaVey's group enters the settlement, it appears abandoned to them. They decide to split into pairs to explore the territory and find whoever sent them the signal. Lucas takes Scott with him, Josh goes with Riley, and Eve stays with LaVey. Kay tells everyone in the camp about the mysterious old man who attacked one of them. People start getting nervous and fear for their lives. Kay and Maribet suspect that Lily knows more than she's saying. Dr. Sam suggests organizing a softball game to help the girl relax and open up. Eve and LaVey notice a handprint on the wall of one of the houses. They enter inside and discover the body of a man. Everything looks as if he became a victim of some ritual. LaVey checks the man's pockets and finds a photograph with his colleagues. He confesses to Eve that his mission here is not only to rescue people from Los Angeles. He was also sent to find this man and seven other members of the rescue team who went missing during a mission in the Mojave. LaVey finds a long-range radio with solar batteries and takes it. Eve sees a smoldering fire in the house and realizes that someone has been here recently. She wants to gather everyone and leave the settlement before its inhabitants return. Izzy tries to dissuade her father from flying into the portal, afraid of being left all alone. Gavin is determined and convinces his daughter that it's the only way to bring back their loved ones. Dr. Nathan plans to return to the military base to manually disable the radar that tracks activity in the portal. The scientist pursues her own interests. Her fiancé Diana disappeared in the Mojave portal, and she is determined to save her. Josh and Riley discover a secret passage in one of the houses and decide to explore where it leads. Descending the stairs, they reach another exit, but they can't return, the door closes behind them. Left alone with Scott, Lucas attacks him, accusing him of the heroine's disappearance. Suddenly, an unknown assailant attacks the drug dealer from behind, beginning to choke him. Lucas shouts at Scott to pick up the fallen gun and shoot the attacker, but Scott is paralyzed with fear. Another man appears in the house, aiming a weapon at the anthropologist. Don't move! You speak English? That's entirely unexpected. Eve and LaVey find an observation point on a tree and climb up to it to locate the rest of their team. From the height, they see Josh and Riley stuck below. The situation becomes critical when a group of aggressively inclined people approaches the settlement. A horn sounds, and the warriors begin to attack the unwelcome guests, forcing them to flee. Riley and Josh hide behind rocks outside the settlement, but their pursuers catch up to them. Then a horn sounds, causing the pursuers to retreat. Seeking shelter, Eve and LaVey burst into a house and find children inside. The warriors follow them, and it seems they will catch up soon. LaVey gestures for the children to remain silent as they hide deep inside the house. After a while, a blonde-haired boy approaches the fugitives and informs them that their pursuers have retreated. He tells them that his grandfather calls them people from the sky and asks if they plan to take over their village. LaVey and Eve assure the boy that their goal is only to find a way out and save their friends and family. They ask him to help them find another way out of the settlement. Lucas and Scott are tied up and placed in the house next to the man's body. At first, they argue and blame each other, but then they decide to work together to escape. Scott crawls to Lucas, takes his lighter, and ignites his own ropes. When he frees himself, he hesitates for a moment about whether to untie Lucas. However, he realizes he needs his help to survive. After freeing Lucas, he punches Scott for his hesitation. Josh decides to sneak over the wall to rescue his mom and others. At first, Riley hesitates, not wanting to participate, but seeing disappointment in Josh's eyes, she agrees to help. She plays music on her phone, attracting the attention of the gate guards. Taking advantage of the distraction, the teens infiltrate the settlement, where they encounter Lucas and Scott. The boy leads Eve and LaVey to a hidden passage in the wall, through which they can escape outside. The rest of the group catches up with them, but just as they are about to flee, they are surrounded by the boy's grandfather and the settlement warriors. The old man aims a bow at the fugitives, but a mysterious woman orders him to lower his weapon. The company successfully leaves the strange village and returns to their camp. Arriving at the military base, Nathan encounters a representative of the leadership. The man anticipates Nathan's plans to disable the radar and intends to thwart her. Meanwhile, Rebecca convinces Gavin to prepare for the flight despite everything warning him that he has critically little time left to save his family. In the evening, after the softball game, Tay tries once again to talk to Lily. At first, she resists the conversation, but thanks to Tay's care, she finally opens up. The girl reveals that Veronica is not actually her sister. Tearfully, Lily confesses that a year ago, Veronica and her father Aaron abducted her and held her hostage. Hearing their conversation, the religious girl decides to run away. Rebecca brings Gavin and Izzy to the excavation site. She explains that 10,000 years ago, people settled here, 
who fell into the La Brea tar pits. She shows them a letter from Eve, which they found in a glass bottle during the excavations. In the letter, Eve apologizes to Gavin for her actions and asks him to find a way to bring her and Josh home. In the end, she informs them that the pit is gradually closing, and their hope for rescue is fading. This time tomorrow, the light will be gone. And if you want to save them, you're going to have to take the risk. Do you think Gavin will be able to save his family? Share your thoughts in the comments below about who the mysterious inhabitants of the settlement might be and what other mysteries the pit might hold. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel.